Um, so we're moving topics a bit today. Before there are any questions or comments about the things we've been discussing. Okay. So let's 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 continue with with our discussion today. Okay. So what we what, what we're trying to do, what we're going to try to do is to move to a to discussion of uh, the propagation of strings in first space. Okay. Today's lecture, probably the next one, will uh, deal with material given in Brzezinski's book. And then after that, we spend maybe a lecture and a half uh, uh, describing more systematic applications. Uh, and then we'll pictures. All right. So, but, but let me start. You know, start approaching the topic like which is yes. So, you know, uh, when we first started discussing the quantum, the the, the, uh, the motion of strings in uh, flat space, we wrote down this Polyakov action. Um, to describe the motion of strings. And in much of today's lecture, we continue to talk about strings in flat space. Uh, but uh, revisit the question of vertex operators. If you remember the logic of the courses we presented and so far, we went to the formal gauge. Okay? And then we sat in the formal gauge and then said that the formal prime rates were good vertex operators, or more sophisticatedly, uh, VRST invariant operators were good vertex operators. And um, because they gave us when we gave sensible results and so on. Okay. Now we could have instead addressed the questions, uh, the question of what are the good vertex operators in the theory, uh, in Polyakov's language. Then okay, in the language of integrating both over the uh, uh, coordinates that describe the motion of the word sheet, as well as the well as the word sheet metric. We could, in that language, have already started addressing the question: What insertions can we add to this uh, string path integral? You know, without first sort of uh, yeah, we we could have tried to do a systematic analysis of this question of insertions uh, at the meeting stage itself. Okay, we did some of this, but I'm going to present. I'm going to present this a little bit. Okay, so um, so the question that we could have asked is the following. Suppose we've got this action, which is uh, 1 by 4 by uh, right, where G, G, A, B. Still at the moment, flat space and still with B equals zero and so on. We've got this action. And we write down the polyakov path integral dx uh, dg d g s. Um, what uh, uh, vertex operators are there? What vertex operators are there that we could add to this integral? Okay. Now the basic guiding principle is always Okay, um, you know we want this path integral to be wide and very for all the reasons that we've mentioned before. Okay, and so any vertex operators that yeah, we of course demand the of the invariants, which is the of the invariants from vertex operators, we will also demand that they be wide. Okay, so let's see how we can try to uh, uh, you know address the questions of what vertex operators could enter our uh, our our action, you know, what vertex operators will enter our uh, uh, path integral uh, without uh, uh, invoking the you know, sophisticated concepts of the form of the invariants. Okay, so let's first discuss, you know, the, the tachyon vertex operator. So, in addition to the z power minus this, we, we want to build something that's diffeomorphism invariant. And uh, uh, also y invariant. Okay. So if we want to give of the variance, we can integrate this over the you know, world sheet. And we want to put an e to the pi k on x. And the question we're going to ask is where does this insertion y invariant? Okay. Now, in order to address this question, 
Um, at first, it seems that this insertion must automatically divide the pet. If you're very naive, you think this insertion is automatically divide the pet because uh, wild transformations appear not to act on X. They appear to act on, uh, on the well sheet metric, but not on X. So, why should there be any uh, transformation of this field of the wild transformation? We know this is not true. We know this is not true because we know that even by a dot x has uh, conformal weight. Remember, the conformal transformations are a com compounding of a diffeomorphism transformation and a wild transformation. So the fact that this transforms is given uh, the fact that it's a diffeomorphism scalar and that transforms with a certain uh, um, conformal weight allows us to deduce, you know, a posterior how it transforms and the wild transformation. But we don't want to use all that machine. We just want to try to see if we can directly see how this transforms. Okay? So now, from this, this point of view, it seems a little positive, right? X is just X. Um, in the path integral, it doesn't seem. G changes under one transformation, but X doesn't change, so why should there be any action on e to the pi k dot X? Okay? If there was no action on e to the pi k dot X, this could never be wild invariant, because square root G transforms under wild transformations, e to the pi k dot X doesn't, so this would never be wild Okay. Now, but the key point, of course, is that insertions inside a path integral involving multiplications of fields at the same point are ill-defined. And they have to be related. Okay? So we have to define what we mean by this ill-defined. If we just mean the insertion of this thing into the path integral, it makes no sense. It's ill As always, we have to define what, what, what that object means. Okay? And it's in that definition, in specifying the careful definition, in the regulation of the UV, as always, that the wild factor keeps. Okay? So let's see how, uh, let's remind ourselves how we do this on the flat world sheet in conformity. In conformity in theory of the flat world sheet, what we did was we said that any function of x, um, the renormalized function, was defined as e to the power factors. Never a case. 
okay, we need a scanner. But uh, what we're going to do is the following. Okay, what we're going to do is to replace delta of sigma sigma prime by what we call D of sigma. Where D of sigma sigma prime is defined to be the geodesic distance, it's the proper distance along the geodesic that links the point sigma. Sigma and sigma prime. Our rule is construct the geodesic that goes from sigma to sigma prime. Compute the proper distance between sigma and sigma prime on this geodesic and put that in. Uh, and of course, we want to square it. Is this here? This clearly reduces to what we did in the flat space in the flat space limit. Sigma prime, the whole thing squared. 
plus alpha prime and omega. Repeat this exercise, we're not going to repeat this exercise for the more complicated 
the problem of, of looking at the massless coupling of this. Okay? And this is a more complicated uh, exercise in several ways. The first of which is that it's going to require us, um, uh, it's going to require us to more accurately compute this. Uh, uh, the basic point, point of the, the, the we can get away with uh, this crude approximation to the uh, uh, to the distance, the geodesic distance between two points, because the operator that we inserted just had x the same point. They have derivatives of x. But now, you know, the massless vertex operators have derivatives of x. Okay? So they explore in this formula, uh, this two point function formula, this uh, formula which involves subtraction of x at one point and x at another point, they start exploring the two, uh, two operators going further away. Just in the derivative expansion of this. Okay? So we, in order to do calculation, um, in order to do the calculation for uh, uh, the similar calculation for massless vertex operators, we're going to need to uh, more accurately estimate the distance between the geodesic distance between two points. Okay, so that's the exercise we're now going to try to uh, we're now going to try to Okay, so, so the exercise of trivial one. It's an exercise of solving the geodesic equation. Um, in, an, in the neighborhood of a point. So we adopt a formula gauge. So GAV is equal to, uh, uh, what do we call it? Uh, delta IV and e to the part of the Okay? And now we're going to try to find, uh, we're going to try to solve the theoretic equation. Um, so in order to do that, let's find all the gamma symbols. Okay. Remember that gamma AB, uh, well, let me first do this that with three lower indices and then place one. So gamma ABC is half of uh, GAB, sorry, GACB plus GABC C A minus GAB. Now, in this particular gauge, everything takes into work because uh, all derivatives act only on omega. Okay? So every time you have a GAC comma B is simply GAC and uh, 2 del B of omega. That is the derivative acts on omega. Okay? So, so what we get, we get uh, is equal to the halves go away because we get twos. Uh, we have to pass to omega outside. And we, uh, we get uh, delta A C del B omega plus delta A delta B C del A omega minus delta A B del C. Okay? Now, in order to get gamma and AB with C up, I'm supposed to multiply for the inverse metric. The inverse metric is, is proportional to, to uh, delta, but with an e to the power minus 2. Okay? So, gamma ABC is simply just removes this. Is this one? We have that. Delta AC, then B omega plus delta B C delta A omega minus delta A B delta C.
if you know this is the form. This is the form. Put any values for A, B, and C, okay? Plug it in this year. You can raise lower. All the raising and lowering is with respect to gain. Okay, this is the answer. You put in some value for A, B, and C, you plug in here, you get the answer. Working all of 
by order in this distance expansion. When you plug this into in the next order, so what we get, you know, we're going to solve this order by. So we're going to say that x a of lambda is equal to x a zero plus x a one plus lambda. Okay. Now let's so let me take this as a trial example. So I'm going to suggest that x a of zero, x a of zero is this object. Notice that x a of zero is itself linear in y. But the source term that we get for x a one when we plug in here as a correction is quadratic in y. Okay? So if we're solving in a power series expansion in y, if we're solving in a power series expansion in powers of y, that is the distance between the points. This is a good zero order approximation to us. Is this clear? So now the next question is what is the correct first order correction to this uh, to this zero order approximation? Okay. So now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and solve uh, uh, solve this equation to first order. So um, at first order we get the we get the following equation. We get del 2xa1 by del 2 lambda squared plus gamma abc del xa0 by del lambda, del xb0 by del lambda. Okay? Uh, is equal to 0. Okay. Now, this is just, uh, so that's d2x1a by d2 lambda squared uh, is equal to minus gamma abc times y a y b, y b y c. Okay? Can, uh, uh, and we can integrate this equation. Now, you know, let's say that we set x0 to go between the points that we want. Then x1 has to be 0 at the earlier, early time. You know, lambda equals 1 at 0, lambda equals 0. And 0 at lambda equals 1. You know what I mean? I'm solving this path in further, I'm solving this path in further in theory. And I've already met my boundary conditions. Namely, x at 0 is 0, and x at 1 is ya. I've already met that with zero thoughts. Okay? So all the perturbations, x1 at 0 will be equal to 0, and x, x1 at lambda will be equal to 0. And so on, that will be true at Okay? So now let's, let's solve this. So we want the solution to this equation that uh, has that. Uh, uh, x1 at, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, so anyway, the most general solution to this equation is x1a is equal to um, a constant ca plus ba times lambda. Okay? Uh, Uh, plus this minus gamma a b c y b y c lambda square by two. This is the particular solution to this differential equation, and this is the homogeneous solution. Okay, and the fact that x one is zero has to be zero tells us this one is going to zero, and uh, the fact that uh, x1 here 1 has to be uh, uh, 0, tells us that this constant is, uh, is this object. So this is plus gamma a b c uh, y, sorry, y b y c y b y c by 2 
Okay. Okay, so we found the correct geodesic path, the path that goes between 0 and the point y. y in the first order, to the first uh, non trivial uh, order, maybe the quadratic order in, uh, in this distance y. And it's clear we can continue this, pro uh, this procedure to whatever order we want. And we get some formula which we could uh, e easily you know, do. Okay, uh, any questions or comments? Okay, so now the next question is what is the distance between these two points? Let's work out the first correction. So, and this lecture is going to be a little short. We'll be obliged. There's this colloquium on INO physics that I have to attend. Uh, so we'll have have a sharp deadline for let's see how far. Maybe I should just leave some of these details. Anyway, that's okay. So now that we could, so we found that x a of lambda is equal to um, y a lambda plus gamma a b c uh, y b y c by two lambda uh, minus gamma b c a y b y c by 2 lambda c. Okay? And lambda lambda between c and lambda. Now the next question is what is the distance between these two uh, these two points computed to second order uh, in y? That's also of course very simple to work out because the distance is given uh, uh, The square distance, now, I don't know, I'm interested in the square distance. Let me just check. Okay, then let's, let's go ahead and take the actual distance. The square root of g times, uh, well, it is uh, gab del xa by del lambda, del xb by del lambda, square root. Okay, integrated lambda equals zero and between zero and one. Okay, so uh, we can now plug in. Okay, so what is dx a by d lambda? So dx a by d lambda is equal to y a plus gamma a b c by two y b y c. Uh, minus uh, gamma a b c y b y c c uh, x lambda okay and what is gab gab is equal to gab is equal to delta a b times e to the part of omega now, omega is evaluated at xa, at xa of lambda. Okay? So, in order to get everything right, we will also have to take the expand omega. Okay? We have, we have, we have to take the expand omega. Now, to what order are we working? We know that this distance, uh, we know that we are working to the order that gives you one extra y correction to the leading order. So we have Taylor expand omega to the first one. Okay? So, oh yeah, this is not terribly sure. It's, it's worth doing it. It's very interesting. Once. Okay? So omega of um, uh, x a of lambda is equal to omega of 0 plus del m omega 0 
times xm of lambda, where for xm of lambda we substitute this. And uh, to the uh, approximation which we, we're working at the moment, we will only need to say ym tends to It's the leading of that in one time. Okay? So we have, uh, we have uh, integral square root of uh, uh, this business of delta. So D, uh, D x a by D lambda, D x a by D lambda. Okay, times um, omega naught um, times e to the power two omega naught. Mm. That's common, so that's you just put that out here. So e to the power two omega naught times uh, 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 one plus uh, del. 2 del m omega at 0 y m okay, we are going to take that object plug this thing in here okay and uh, uh, do the integral of a lambda okay, of course we are not going to try to do the integral exactly we will expand the relative <laughs> order and do the Okay, so uh, 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 okay, I'll put it. two, three more minutes, and this is one of them. Okay, so uh, so what we get? This thing here is equal to part of omega naught. This part square root we can just uh, expand out to the to the uh, new So that's one plus del m omega y m. Okay. And now this object um, we want to work up to the two uh, leading order in this one. So the first thing we get is uh, y a plus let's call this part delta. x not plus delta x a square root of the six square okay so that is the same thing as e to the power of 2 omega not into 1 plus del m omega y m lambda times x not square square root into 1 plus delta x a dot uh, x not a over 2 x not square. Now we're almost home, so let's finish it. Uh, so, so, I mean, something's going to have to help you with that, with that, that formula sometimes. Okay, so let's first formally finish it. Um, okay, so, so where are we? So we have, uh, uh, first we have the e power omega naught times square root of x square root of y squared that's a zero order uh, thing that we have into 1 plus either this term the del m omega y m lambda or this term plus 
delta x a dot x naught a over 2 uh, x, x naught square which is y squared y squared plus square root outside everything Okay, this was the integral, now we have to integrate it. Okay, so this thing integrates to half because it's got a lambda outside it. And uh, uh, now this delta x a, Jyoti want to be with delta x a. It is gamma b c a y b y c uh, by 2 lambda minus gamma b c a y b y c by 2 lambda square okay so we might as well uh, do the integral of this object uh, also so we do the integral of this object over lambda and uh, uh, this guy gives us half this guy gives us one third half minus one third is one six so we get one by six gamma b c a y b y c okay that's what we get from delta x a integrated uh, we dot this with uh, with x naught which is uh, y a and then we take uh, uh, this uh, so 112 and square root of y Okay, so we replace this by a half. Okay, so what's the final answer? So our final answer is d is equal to e to the power of omega naught uh, square root of y squared times uh, uh, one plus del m omega y e m by 2 okay plus uh, this is gamma a b c gamma a b c y b y c by 12 uh, y a over 12 Actually, this was not a square, this was a proper one. Okay, just as a check, this thing, the leading one terms are the y, and the subleading terms are both of homogeneity, so that the uh, one over the y. Okay, and to completely finish this, I need to know what. Uh, uh, gamma A, B, C, so I have to calculate gamma A, B, C, Y, A, Y, B, Y, C. Just be pointing at the Very long calculation. Uh, I mean, it's a trivial calculation, but we do a lot less to do it. 
But uh, you know, you could have guessed the answer, the form of the answer is an increment. Right? We're going to get into the power y naught times delta uh, times uh, times distance. Then you're going to have the first order, your correction is proportional to y. Okay? If omega was constant, there would be no correction. So it's going to be proportional to delta of omega, and the symmetric down to what else we've got by some other Okay, so it's pretty intuitive answer. I have a feeling we messed up with this 12, so we'll know when we get to the uh, final ones. Uh, okay. okay. So even if I mess up with the 12, okay, yeah. Uh, even if I mess up with the 12, uh, uh, I'll appeal to you people to correct it and get the right answer. You see, the procedure is very straightforward. It's more and more painful as you go to higher and higher See? But uh, this is just a illustrative procedure. Okay. All right. So, now that we have this distance here, okay, now that we have this distance here, we can now plug this into our formula for what we going to subtract. Okay. Now you see, the key point is the following. In this distance formula, we have, we're going to take log of this distance. Okay. So log of the distance, uh, this part just doesn't contribute at all. Log of y squared is independent. This part gives us a factor of omega. In this part, when we take log of this term, we have to expand the first order omega, so just be this term. Okay? So there will be a del m, del m omega times y. Okay? Now, if we were only interested in operators that were evaluated explicitly at y equals 0, then we would set y to 0, and that term would contribute. That was what happened for the attack term. But if our operators have the element of x, okay, so that there is a, uh, there is a, that, that the, this contraction term acts on that derivative. Second derivatives. And we also need second derivatives. 
Okay, this I'm not even going to attempt to sketch out in class. I'm just going to quote Polishinsky's result. Uh, hopefully, what this class has given you is the feeling that you could do it if you want. Okay, uh, and uh, Polishinsky's result is that the suppose you want del a del b prime of uh, alpha prime by two log d squared. This is equal to one plus gamma by two alpha prime del a del b of delta omega and del a del b of alpha prime by two log d squared is equal to minus gamma by two alpha prime del a del b del omega. Okay, but gamma uh, gamma is equal to minus two by three. Uh, and you might think it's funny that somebody would write minus two by three as you know invent a symbol for minus two by three. But uh, the reason that uh, we just found it is that um, basically this is the result that you get in the renormalization scheme that we used. Right, I mean this uh, if you if you use a different, you know, if, if distance was not the geodesic distance, something else, if you use dimension when you write it, you define all these things, uh, you need different answers. And the answer will be encapsulated in the change of this gamma. We see that. So at the moment, we should just think of gamma as equal to minus 2 by 3, but the, the, these, these answers will turn out to be more general. Okay. Uh, Okay, so if we were following the Fourier approach, we would at 
the next order, we will modify this as we put a square root g and a integrator of the function. Okay? And then the question we will ask ourselves is where is this insertion quite limited? Now, each of these operators is defined with the normal ordering that we talked about. Okay? So explicitly, each of these operators involves subtractions. Now let's look at the operator that's equal to pi px, del ax, del x. The one that comes from, let's say, g. There are three kinds of subtractions here. The subtraction is when you're subtracting these two words. That could work exactly like the that you want. Then there are also subtractions when you subtract one of this, contracting to one of this. That will involve one derivative. If, if we want to understand how that varies under wide transformations, we want to know one derivative of the variation under wide transformations of, of this, this property. Because you see, we have one derivative. And finally, you also have the subtraction involving this guy contracting with this guy. That will involve two derivatives of variations under wide Okay? So if we know all of these three formulas, which we now know, we can very simply write down how that object varies under wide Okay? Uh, because we have because I have to go to this colloquium, I'm not going to try to write down uh, I'm not going to try to do this now. But I'm, could you try this as an exercise? Can you try this as an exercise to write down the wild variation of this object using this using these formulas? Okay? Uh, using these formulas, we write down the wild variation of, of that object. Okay? And uh, we take it from the next class. I'll quickly sketch the answer there and we take it from the next class. Uh, basically, we want to set that object to zero. Okay? And that will be the thing that gives us the, uh, um, the uh, uh, permission for uh, uh, acceptable vertex operators. Okay. So, uh, just to remind you, this Friday we will not have a class. And next Wednesday we won't have a class. But we will have a class next Friday. And... Uh, um, Let's actually, just before going to the look, let's actually set a date for this examination. Um, does somebody know what, uh, I think 23rd is a Sunday. 23rd is a Sunday. 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th. Okay. Uh, on the 29th, I need down. So uh, we'd like the exam and uh, the grading or whatever grading we do. We'd like the exam discussion of the exam to happen before then. So, so I suggest the following. I suggest the following, the following. I suggest that we have. Uh, yeah, I think it's fun. Okay, so this, what, what we're going to be basically the final class before our exam will be next week. Then after that, I'm away for a week. And then we have two more classes, which are uh, on Wednesday and Friday. I think that's something like the. Friday? What's 28th, yes. 26th to 28th. But I suggest that we have the exam on the 26th and discuss it in the day. Okay? And then whatever leftover material we continue in the semester subsequent to that, uh, we'll do that very quickly we're going to touch. Okay, yeah, so, so let's uh, okay, so I'll certainly finish Polchinski's discussion of this stuff. Next class, uh, my discussion of uh, the dimensional regularization way of doing it will have to be. Okay, good. So let's 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 fix that as the schedule. Um, so now one quick discussion. Okay, let me go with one quick discussion about the class uh, or the exam. Uh, maybe we can.